Good everybody, Rebecca Hollis here and I'm with Liam Malone. How are you buddy? How are we team? We good? Very bloody well. Um, we are testing out this at the moment, with it, which is uh, two wireless. We talked about last week, we've got um, iPhone 6 Plus with the Olo clip, TRS into a TRS, into one, trans into one receiver, into two transceivers. Hopefully this is working. It's blowing my mind. How's the audio? If anyone is watching, is the audio good or not? Yes or no? If someone could answer that, it would be great. Benny? Is the audio Not good? Sick. Oh, success. All right, we're into it. All right, Liam, how are you, buddy? Yeah, bro, I'm good. All right, for those who don't know um, what your deal is, we obviously just met, just had a cool little brickie and want to have a quick chat. Uh, give them the one-on-one the -on -one of who you are and how you roll and what's going on. I'm Paralympic champion. I just got back from Rio. I'm sorry, what was that? You were <laughs> Paralympic champion. Oh, how many uh, medals? How many medals? I got three medals in Rio. I got two gold medals and one silver. Bam. Smashed a few Paralympic records. Phew. Uh, and just moved to Auckland and... Uh, you know, interested in the tech game. Every morning I chuck on two artificial legs, so technology is super important to me. Rebet is at the forefront of uh, the, the digital game. I'll, pa I'll pay him now. I'll pay him <laughs> yeah. now. Get the money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other day I had enough caffeine, and I, I'm just like, I'm going to ring Rebet. And so I sent him a message anyway, because I don't want to inter interrupt him. And uh, he ended up giving me a call. We had a, a quick, cool conversation, and then we caught up this morning for breakfast. So here we are. Here we are. Um, it, was, it was super cool. A lot of people always usually reach out, and I'm always happy to have a chat with anyone. Uh, Liam's story is obviously uh, pretty special, but probably what the thing that uh, attracted me most to the conversation was actually around the determination and, and drive around what he's achieved, what you've been doing. And it's always um, the transition from, I think, sport just in general with mindset is something that a lot of people don't understand. Obviously, then with um, going to the Paralympics and stuff as well at a, at a high level, you probably under, understand that too. Um, talk, talk to me a little bit about, um, oh shit, where do you want to go? Do you want to go tech, sport, whatever you want? I'm, I'm pretty easy. Well, for a start, I don't think of myself as an athlete because I never got into... Really? Run, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think of myself as an athlete. Oh shit. Yeah, because I don't even, I don't really like running that much. <laughs> I mean, so I, the 400's my specialty, and if you were to, to describe someone being lost, you'd say they're running around in circles. So Daytona for feet. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, there you go. And not only that, is I never got into sport because I was passionate about running around in circles or passionate about sport. I got into sport to change my life because I was in a, a bad, well, I got into running because I was at a bad point in my life three years ago in my first year of university. Realised that I needed to change my macro environment and my micro environment and that I needed to give myself some level of opportunity down the line. What was go going wrong? What, drugs, oh, drugs bullshit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, mum died the year before. I tried to go to uh, Perth and escape. Ended up working with bad, uh, bad people. Bad people. Came back, went to university. University is a great time, but I mean, you're drinking three or four nights a week. That's not the way to overcome your Weird. mother's death down in down, down, uh, down at UC. And UC was a loose time at that point because town was shut down. The university was paying for uh, all these epic events to go on. And I, I made this analysis one day of all these different things that I could do. It's like go and become an actor, go to the Paralympics, climb Mount Cook, start my own business. And uh, this going to the Paralympics was the obvious choice and that's why I ended up going down and... When you decided to do that, jumping from non-athlete to go straight to the top to win gold at the Paralympics... Killed me. What was the... What, what killed you? Was it the, the, was it the training, the mindset? Like obviously it was a... Everything. Because yeah. it's a, a totally different game to where I was. Had to become dedicated, had to become... <laughs> had to become hard working, had, to, had, work. to, had to do everything, all the classic kind of keys to being successful anything or you know the advent of something becoming successful yeah which I had none of those qualities what, did you, so before running you just were what lazy I was disorganized I didn't have any sort of direction yeah. I think direction's really important I didn't have any sort of self-confidence for seven years I wore pants because I didn't want anyone to see my artificial legs from 12 Got to 19 yeah. didn't wear uh, shorts once, just always wore pants, self-conscious, you know, yeah. concerned, you know, I wouldn't get a girlfriend, ready, ready, rah, all that sort of stuff. So there were, going to the Paralympics was so much more than just going to win medals, yeah. you know? It was, you know, it was about the did whole it, journey. Did it feel, after you did it, it was, there was a, a mental mind shift from, with how you felt about... Not yeah. after. The, uh, the day I decided that I was going to go to the Paralympics... Yeah everything changed everything everyone keeps asking that since you come back from yeah, rio yeah, yeah. has your life changed and that's what everyone in the media keeps asking me and i'm like no, no no my life changed back in 2013 when i decided that i was going to change my life but the, what's interesting is you ch you had the mind shift change before you actually did it and it changed from then opposed to actually after the the, the pinnacle of the journey yeah, which would be the gold right because everyone would always be like you build up so long for this moment and then you hit that then what 
you actually did that as like the afterthought almost of what you'd actually decided, right? Absolutely. That's interesting. Absolutely. And so where does it leave your headspace now going from sport high level and you're obviously talking about tech and business and stuff. Are you starting to see a mental transition a little bit from you obviously got more stuff you want to do with 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 sport as well, but start to then go to business? Like do you see Yeah, absolutely. I mean I've just finished my degree at uh, Victoria University and I went to and I studied marketing and international business. And so for one, I am the business in a sense. Yeah. And we're always taught how to compete at business school, right? But my perspective is that the best way to compete is to not compete at all, is to totally differentiate yourself. Because you know, different I'm- Different game, different Yeah, game, different yep. game. And I'm a different person. Like the reason I don't think of myself as an athlete is because I'm more passionate about technology, more passionate about business and different things. I mean, I just spent the weekend at skydive school up in Parakai in <laughs> Auckland, just jumping out of planes all weekend because you know, that's where I find some sense of relaxation and, so gnarly. and stuff. So, um, you know, my kind so of- just to be clear, jumping out of a plane is relaxing for you. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think it provides a sense of freedom. I get it. Yeah, and I mean, you come from professional snowboarding, snowboarding and yeah. when you're out in the mountains, I mean, I snowboarded as well. You have this massive sense yep. of freedom and it's- Yeah, but like, that's the equivalent of saying, hey, jumping off a 200 foot cliff gives me freedom. It's like, no, that shit sounds dangerous. Yeah, but it almost <laughs> it forces you to, to be relaxed because if you yeah. can't relax, you're done for. And it's just something very special. I don't know, there's something special about it. How do you feel now? Do, you, do people treat you differently now that you are Olympic gold medalist? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But my friends don't. My friends treat me exactly the same, which is cool because they keep me. They, yeah, they just give me <laughs> shit because <laughs> that keeps you grounded, right? And you want to stay grounded. And I mean, I'm a down to earth guy. I mean, I'm an evolutionary disaster. But I'm so. I am. I am. I am so fortunate to be born now. Then, like 200 years Dude. ago, they would have been like, throw them in the pit. No, no, you know, no. I would have been done Dude. for. Yeah. So I'm really lucky just to be here today. And be one, be born a human being. Two, being born in New Zealand. Because if I was born in Africa, I wouldn't survive. That's yep. just the truth. Because they wouldn't have the technology for prosthetics. And I'm lucky to be at a point when prosthetics are allowing me to live, uh, you know, the same quality life as you guys might have lived. Do you, are, are you happy with the rate of progression around technology for prosthetics and stuff? Yeah, like, absolutely. So like 3D printing's obviously got to come a huge long way. There's so much of the, the stuff that's come in in the mix. Like talk to me about like that must be a game. Massive. Are you, are you excited? You yeah, massively like excited. I mean, there's going to be a point of singularity where my legs are just as good as the calf muscle and yeah. and the foot. You know, that that's probably you know 50 to 100 years away. But I'm going to be part of that kind of progression. And one of the ways that we can measure technology is by how fast something's moving, yeah. right? Uh, at least in the physical world. So. For me, if you look at the times that I've been running, or just the time that amputees have been running in the last 20 years, you know, you've gone from being, I've gone from being the slowest person probably in the country to being the fastest person to run 400 metres in the country, legs or no legs. No, so, so in terms of numbers, what's a, what would be, what's a record? So the New Zealand able-bodied record is 46.1, and that was made maybe 12 years ago, and I ran 46.2 in Rio. Holy shit. Yeah, and so the world record's 43, 09 I think who's held by the South African dude and you know it's my intention to break that in the next four years not because I want to carry on winning medals or anything like that but because I think that's really important to do. How much of a driver is you versus yourself versus you versus beating the perception of what others think of disability? It's just me it's me versus myself when I was a very young kid I was very very motivated I was very positive and I was a massive dreamer right and then throughout my teens, I had a lot of shit kind of happen. Mum died, became really self-conscious. Yeah. Um, my whole world just kind of crumbled around. And now I'm, part of going to Rio was, you know, rebuilding that self-confidence. Totally. And, you know, you want to contribute something to society at the end of the day. What do, you, what do you feel that you represent now to others? Opportunity. Opportunity and hard work. I mean, I'm just a regular guy. Not only am I a regular guy, but I'm a regular guy that was making consecutive bad decision after bad decision during my teen years and I was able to turn it all around. You know what's interesting is you said that one moment changed everything because you know what you were like mentally before it. When you, was there, a, was there, a, do you remember the hook when it switched to, it's like old new, new you, right? But it's the same person but just a mental shift. Sure. What was the key driver to that, to that point of like stuff that I can do more, I can when do When I was more. at rock bottom. When yeah. I was at rock bottom. Do you remember that point? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah remember it clear as day. So what actually happened was, I drunk drove. No shit. Yeah, I drunk drove. And as much as I believe that if I drop this bottle, it'll hit the ground, 
uh, I believe that I'd never be the type of person to drink drive. And what happened was, I drunk drove, um, crashed my truck, and then I had to turn everything around. I, you know, everything, I just made bad decision after bad decision after bad decision, and uh, it just got the best of me. And then you changed. And the next day, I changed everything. I changed absolutely everything. Good, it's sort of a mega chats. Well, this has been Liam Malone. We're gonna be no doubt, I'm sure, hanging out a whole bunch more in the future. Congrats to him and all the big successes that he's done. And um, no, man, I'm stoked for you, bro. It's good. Thank you, thanks for having me, man. It's always good to talk to you. It's good, man, mega times. All right, see you guys soon.